Hello everyone, welcome to Paris, the city of the 2024 Olympics. Welcome to the international meeting of the Collective Pour les Chevaux. Welcome and thank you for being here in Paris or on live stream. The Collective Pour les Chevaux has organized a meeting every year since it was founded in July 2020. This year we organized two meetings, one of which took place a month ago and was dedicated exclusively to French riding instructors. Education is vital when we are to move towards a future without hyperflexion. Improving education is essential, but it does not protect the horses in the warm-ups today. For them, we organize this weekend's international meeting. The aim of this meeting is to work together to find an action plan to better protect horses against the use of hyperflexion in the warm-ups, and in particular, high-level dressage competitions. Hyperflexion is a vast subject. Two days won't be enough to talk about everything. Discussions will inevitably go off in all directions. I will try to guide the discussions towards the aim of the meeting. We will not waste time with these arguments heard over and over again during discussions with people using hyperflexion. A major problem is knowing what we're talking about when we talk about hyperflexion. We therefore begin the meeting with the definition of hyperflexion as given by the collective and the scientific studies. The FEI will present its definition tomorrow morning. According to the members of the collective pour les chevaux, the attitude of hyperflexion is not reserved to the chin to chest roll curve posture. Hyperflexion begins as soon as the horse's nose is brought behind the vertical by the rider, whether on foot, in the saddle or driving. We do not consider all hyperflexion situations to be abusive, but we should at all times avoid taking and holding the horse's nose behind the vertical, whether the neck is high or low. The various situations of hyperflexion are at best unnecessary and burdensome, at worst counterproductive and yes, abusive. The vertical is the limit. We have based this limit on the following features. The horse's innate locomotion, which is with the nose clearly in front of the vertical. The texts of the classical masters indicating the vertical as the limit not to be exceeded. The majority of scientific studies on the subject of postures behind the vertical conclude that they have no positive effect on performance and that they are detrimental to the horse's well-being. The so-called low deep in round LDR is the most widespread form of hyperflexion because many people believe it is harmless and even indispensable to the training of horses. Here's a quick non-exhaustive non list of what several of the scientific studies have revealed about the harmfulness of LDR, which is why the collective pour les chevaux does not accept its use under any circumstance. A horse should not be held in this posture at all because LDR impairs frontal vision, it impairs breathing, it puts needless pressure on the vertebra and strain on the nuchal and supraspinal ligament blocking the back further down. It imposes an important and totally useless and counterproductive effort to keep the head this far back behind the vertical. It provokes a misalignment of the vertebra it puts the temporal mandibular joint under strain, changes the angle of action of the bit, and teaches the horse to stay behind the bit. It lowers the neck, the base of the neck, and puts strain on the junction between C7 and T1. It puts the horse in a state of learned helplessness as they are trapped in this posture. We also base our limit of the vertical to the FEI training scale which says the nose behind the vertical is caused by hands used too strongly. The fault may result either from a momentary mistake in applying the aids, or it may be a symptom of long-term incorrect training. The German Federation's criteria for stewards also use the vertical as an observable. But you can see momentarily deeper head neck posture with the horse's face slightly behind the vertical, right here, um, added in the horse-friendly riding criteria. It's not useful to discuss this.
Because what can be seen in the warm-ups is never momentarily, nor slightly, but always prolonged and clearly behind the vertical, which is unacceptable. We are here to discuss the widespread, systematic, prolonged, recurrent, minimized and trivialized use of clear hyperflexion with aids ranging from discrete to brutal. This video might seem too long, but I think it's important to show how bad it gets for the horses out there, how long they are kept in LDR, how many of them are trained this way, and how many other unacceptable situations these so-called experts put their horses through while the stewards and the FEI let it all happen. It's not about a few riders, a few degrees or a few strides. It's about a failing system where warm-ups are turned into spaces where horse abuse is totally normalized. These are images from a recent international dressage yep. competition warm-up. Here you see yeah. the steward. Yeah. So here you can see the the prolonged use of LDR by the three medalists of this test. In the warm-ups you will never see a rider who uses LDR as a method perform a correct neck extension, but you will often see them end up in roll cure. So now we're looking at uh, another medalist in the same test, in the same warm-up, also using prolonged LDR. And excessive LDR on a horse showing irregular gait and other pain signals and still no intervention of the stewards. Here we can see rough and incorrect use of aids, repeated bolting or bucking, constant repeated disturbance in rhythm or balance, and still no intervention from the stewards. And here we have the third medalist of this test. There are only short sequences from this rider. It seems the cameraman avoided filming her. Needless to say that there was no intervention, not even when this happened. So this is during the same weekend, another test in the same warm-up arena. So uh, this is what roll curl looks like. The criteria describe this as extreme posture positions with fixation caused by specific influence. Physical contact of the mouth with the chest caused by the rider's influence. And although this calls for immediate action from the stewards, the rules were once again not enforced. And there goes another one. And another one. These are images from another international competition two months ago. 
I was there for only half an hour and uh, as usual I could film this kind of warm-up sequence. I asked the stewards afterwards why there was no intervention and she said that she hadn't seen any problems in her warm-up arena. Please raise your hand if you see something which would require intervention from a steward in this rider's warm-up. And if you would hand out a red card, you can raise your red card. Riders don't like moments in time because it gives us time to see what they are doing to their horses. They seem to be unaware of the pain they cause using the bit this way. The Collective Polichevo dedicates this meeting to Maître Nathalie Moulinas, who has fought for horses and her humans all her life, and who was a member of the Collective Polichevo. These are images from a test at the Olympics in Tokyo. We won't be able to control what riders do with their horses at home, but we must at least protect them on the showgrounds. The steward should enforce the rules strictly, immediately, and without excuses. And the judges at sea must ring the bell long before this kind of situations occur. Who are you protecting by letting this happen? It's high time to stop blindly following the money and to start listening to people like Gert Teuschmann, Julie Taylor, Carol de Lange, and so many others who have been asking since several years for this blatant horse abuse to be stopped. When we see this, we know how the warm-up looked like, and we know how the training at home looks like. These riders should not be awarded. They should be eliminated. They shouldn't be allowed on a showground. They shouldn't even be allowed to come near horses. Thanks again for being here in Paris and for following our live stream. Special thanks to all the guest speakers, to the translation and live stream chat crew, to all the other members of the Alliance for Horse Welfare in Sport and the Collective Polichevo, and many thanks to Patrick Gallou for the technical assistance and for everything he does for the horses. I wish you an excellent weekend. Calme, en avant et droit. Merci.